today on Love and Lies? It's just, it's just me. I don't really give a shit what anybody thinks at all. And I think that in being vulnerable, it, it, there's strength that comes with that mm-hmm. and power. That, that's me. Your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. All right, everybody, I'm here with Dirk Nelson. Happy Sunday, fun day. <laughs> well, I don't know what day it's going to be when, uh, when we actually okay. That's true. This. Well, today it's Sunday. It's today it's Sunday. We're recording on Sunday. Thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Thank Sunday. you for having me. Um, so you are an influencer, model, personal trainer, yep. father, husband. Mm-hmm. I wear a bunch of hats, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Why do, tell me, why do people love you? <laughs> that, you got to know why. A, that's a loaded question. Um, Honestly, I, I just feel that because I'm real, like kind of like what we were talking about when we were walking up the stairs, that I'm just myself. And I think people identify with that or they wish that they could be that way. So when I, I don't know, how long have we been friends? Um, several years. Several years. Yeah. Um, every time I like turn on my phone, you're there and you're doing either something like super <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah, I definitely like to have fun. <laughs> I, yeah, try I, to, I try to squeeze the day. He, he knows this poor guy has to come along with me on all my dumb shit. That's funny. I love it. I'm like, hey, put this on. We're going out. Um, and I think one of the, I think the first impression, you know what? We talked about um, my favorite book, Iron Will, because mm-hmm. you had a picture. Oh, that's and you right. Your, my tattoos. Your tattoos. At, yeah, that's right. So that Iron was, Will tattoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we discussed right. that briefly. Yeah. And so it seems like... Uh, first impression you were you know you have your shit together personal trainer mm, i don't think anybody you weren't even married yet shit oh my god dirk you ran off and got married in vegas like i did yeah you, yeah, you copied me i <laughs> know i did it mm, first mm, mm. i did it first i divorced after that but yeah. <laughs> but i did that's right we have that vegas elvis april vegas, 1st um you know, I'm one of those people. I don't remember. I don't remember birthdays, and mm-hmm. so I can't even tell you when I fucking got married. Yeah. Well, mine was April Fool's, so that's easy. Fools mine get married was, in Vegas. But you know what? Was... Mine was close to mine was close to April Fool's, and everybody yeah. thought it was a joke. Yours, yours was just right before ours, and I was like, "This motherfucker stole my thunder." <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, because I had my shit all set up, and you all oh, snuck that that's in. So funny. I love mm-hmm. it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but so people that don't know you now get a good impression of what your personality is like. And then what brought this interview on is that one day I got on my phone and I, and you posted something Mm -hmm. and it was vulnerable dirt. Yeah. And it was this poem that you wrote about depression. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh gosh. It was in June and um, I suffered from depression and it's just kind of like my my wires are just a little wonky and they don't always work right and every once in a while depression hits me and um this particular one was the um it was the same week anthony bourdain um committed suicide and kate spade so it was kind of like just i was feeling a lot of their pain i guess maybe um i'm an empath so you know i take on a lot of people's feelings were you thinking The reason why I'm asking this is because I think a lot of people, they have that private discussion in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so Kate Spade kills herself. And Mm -hmm. and so we, do you at that point go, if they would fucking do it? Yeah, I mean, it just, I've I've been there before. So I've, I've, you know, when I was in, uh, in high school, there was a point where I put a gun to my head and, you know, did that whole deal. And so I, I Wait, you can't say do that whole deal because there's listeners. The reason why is because there's a lot of people that probably are thinking about going home tonight and putting a gun to their head and I want them to. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we could just go I mean, right into that. Go, yeah. yeah we mean, go right into that. So um, I, you know, put the gun up to my head and, and you know, the saying that life flashes before your eyes, mm-hmm. it did. And uh, it showed my friends and family and my loved ones missing me kind of deal, you know, and it just, whatever the bullshit at that moment that I thought that I needed to, you know, remove myself from this planet. It wasn't worth it. I literally flashed all my all my loved ones, and I dropped the gun and got out of there. And I mean, think about where I'm sitting today. Right. You know, I mean, it's one of those moments, and that's something I think that a lot of people don't realize is I do know that that pain happens, but if you can kind of just wait a week, as silly as that sounds, but life changes so fast. 
we and have so, a um, uh, have a hashtag when dealing with suicide, uh, mm -hmm, not today, mm -hmm. because if you can just get through one more day, yeah, then yep. something will change. Um, when you had the gun in your hand, were you like calm? Did were you shaking? I mean, yeah, I'm a I'm a just a, a pretty calm, strong individual, even in that state of mind. Um, it was just a How little, old were you? 16, 16 years old. It was a little twenty two revolver, and I put a bullet in the chamber, spun it, you know, and uh, put it to my head, and then that's when all the you know the flashes of all my loved ones came through. And um, then I pointed it. I was hiking. I was up in the um, Catalinas out down in Tucson and uh, sitting up on top of this ravine, pointing the gun down at the ravine and click, nothing happened. Now, my personality, I know you don't know me that well yet, but I'm always like one more, you know, <laughs> like, come on, just I one more drink, that. just one more, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so, of course, you know, had I had it to my head, I would have clicked again. Well, I clicked a second click and the gun went off you know, shot into the ravine. And then that's when I just dropped it and went back, hopped in my truck and went home. I mean, it was like, did you tell anybody about it? Not, not for a while. It was, I was very shameful of it, you know, being, I felt weak that I let myself get to that, that point. Um, so. I have to ask this because you said 16 and my mm -hmm. God, we know, I think Arizona is like one of the states that have more suicides. Mm -hmm. um, what would anybody 16, 14 even a male so suicides mm -hmm. you know prevalent white males um what would you say to a 14 15 16 17 year old boy god just fucking push through because life is gonna change so much i mean we've lived so many lives mm -hmm. and if i think about everything that i've done in my life just since that day i mean being a father being a husband being a business owner the amount of memories and happiness that I've created from that day. It's like, it, I mean, I can't even fathom having pulled the trigger and actually gone through with it. Because you've become so, everything that probably that you're thinking at 16, yeah. not at 16, it's well, 16 about getting married just, and having just, a kid. Yeah, you, just, you, just don't, is, you just don't know about life. And so that's, that's not the time. I mean, there never is the time, but at least right. live your life. Like right. whatever your issues are, is going to change. You're so, 16 years old. Get over it. So Robin Williams, mm -hmm. you kind of remind me of, I mean, here's this guy that makes everybody laugh. and Yeah, but he's that comedy tragedy. You yeah. know, there's always that. I, I definitely love to make people laugh and smile. And that's my, I don't know, I want to say my mask, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then on the inside, I have my tragedy of the things that I've been through that, you know, my pain. But a lot of comedians, that's, Chris Farley. Oh, God, I fucking loved him. Yeah, there's so many comedians that, that are hurt. that are so disturbed hurt. on the inside and they use comedy to make themselves feel better. So it's it's not uncommon. I'm gonna post with your permission yeah. your poem. You okay. sent it to me. I'm gonna post that because I think um, people can identify Absolutely. with it. It was um, very powerful. Thank you. And I just really sat back in my chair and just stared at my phone and really mm. took it in because um, I think I mentioned to you that I like you know, throwing rocks at my own glass house, yeah. social media, yeah. I think, you know, the, the grass is always greener on well, social Facebook. media. Yeah, Facebook, Facebook, yep. right? So uh, I was so impressed mm. that you were that vulnerable to people that know you or think that they know you. you, people that don't know you. Um, and so I wanted to, because I really want people to read that. Mm -hmm. It's not long, but I wanted to, you said my demons always my demons are always there offering a fake helping hand. Well, my vices are always there to, you know, say, Hey, you want to hang out? <laughs> You're I'll like, I'll make you feel time. better. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, Damn, the vices, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a really interesting day. I was, I was in a, a dark place in, in the, you know, in the poem, you could call it that. Um, I, uh, it's like a storm. It just kind of rolls through and it was just raining in my head for that week. And um, so I was, you know, I pretty much just shut myself off because I'm an extremely social individual. I'm always out and about, always talking to people. And when I'm there, I, I can't, I literally physically can't. I don't even exercise. I don't do nature. I just kind of, you know, kind of go into my shell. And so I was just literally like locked up in my office all day. And um, I just felt that I needed to put into words whatever I was feeling. And that's just what came out. And um, then I actually shared it with my buddy, Ryan, who's here watching. 
and um, and my wife, we were sitting outside in the grass. You remember that? And um, we were sitting out in my backyard, laying in the grass, looking up at the stars. And I told them about it. And I said, "Hey guys, I um, I wrote this yesterday, and I'd just like to share it with you." And which was extremely vulnerable for me. Yeah, because are now are you wanting to like really share it because now you felt like you had something. Well, when I read it to them, um, both of them said, "Hey, you need to post that." And I don't mind being vulnerable, Dirk. I don't. I really don't like. I think it. It's just. It's just me, and I don't really give a shit what anybody thinks at all. And I think that in being vulnerable, it, it there's strength that comes with that, mm-hmm. and power. Mm-hmm. And um, that wasn't what my intentions were, but it just happens whenever you're open and raw and real. Um, there was a little bit that came from it where there was um, a lot of sympathy and empathy, which I was not seeking. Right. But that's just how people perceive things, and you can't control how people perceive. They're like. Oh, Dirk, I love you. You know, it's like, no, man. Hang I was in just, there, buddy. Yeah, and you're it's like, like, no, dude, I'm fine. I just wanted to um, share my share my story with you, and hopefully, if you're feeling that way too, like, yeah. And either way, like when you put something out there for people to read, um, you're taking a risk of how it's going to be perceived, and it it actually felt really good to post it. I was going to ask you that yeah. because one, you, you get it out of you, and I think that's really important. Yeah, it um, really it's did. It's even like with suicide; it's you. Uh, if you say out loud, it, it mm-hmm. registers a different very, way. Very empowering. Uh huh. Um, you say in there, ironically, others look to me for strength, and I really get that because I'm I'm one mm-hmm. of those people. Yeah. And it's very hard when you mentor, you lead, and people look to you for inspiration and strength and answers, guidance, light, whatever that. It's hard to show. I don't like showing that because. Um, I don't, it's like, I don't want to let them down or I don't want them to, yeah. they might not have anybody else. Well, I felt, you know I, I mean? felt that way. It's like way. your mother going, yeah. you know, when you're mm-hmm. going, mom, you can't fucking. Yeah. Well, I, fe- I felt that way because I've always, everybody always sees me as this strong man, right? Yeah. Not physically, but just every emotionally. But physically other, too. Yeah. I mean, he's, but, if you guys are watching. <laughs> um, but <laughs> And so to kind of show a chink in your armor yeah. is it's a tough thing. It was, it was hard. That was, that was the That's hard thing. Masculine, but at the same time though, like I was helping, you know, if somebody read that and that made them feel better about themselves or their depression or their potential suicide or somebody that they know that suffers from it, it helps you understand a little bit better. That, well, you go, well, fuck, if I'm feeling yeah. like this and he, that they think you mm-hmm. have everything, yeah. all your shit together, yeah. you post something like that. Like, how would we have felt if uh, Robin Williams would have posted oh, something like that? Yeah. I, Wouldn't you know, that have blown us? One thing about Robin Williams, I've analyzed him so much because I, I just, I grew up loving him like we all did. I, you know, of course, everybody's a fan of his, but I definitely felt that his way his brain was, mm-hmm. he had too many tabs open all mm-hmm. the time. And if you take those tabs and then you make them negative or depressed or, you know, sad or, you know, those kinds of things, that's got to just drown him Mm -hmm. because the way his brain was working so fast with his comedy and his humor. And he was like 200 miles an hour all the time. Well, you flip that around 200 miles an hour in a negative Mm -hmm. way, it's just going to drown you. And I, I understand it, to be honest with you. I, I can't even imagine what he was going through. That's why they do a lot of drugs and things like that to the creative people. We, we suffer. <sighs> yeah, we totally so, do. Yeah. Um, you also said, what's it feel like to be normal? I don't know if there's a normal anymore and I don't know what the fuck well, normal feels I sure like. sure I'm glad I'm not fucking I normal. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to be, if anybody, like normal ever, people. if anybody ever told me I was normal, <laughs> then I probably would kill myself. <laughs> but, but, what, but what do you mean by that? What's it feel like to be normal? You stated that yeah. and you stated that from a place of. Well, I, I think that like, I probably because of my path, it's just been very unique and different. And not I don't the way know. I pick, pick a fence with mom and dad. And no, all that. yeah. Um, do you believe in God? No. Do you, you don't believe in God? No. I'm not religious at all. I'm, I'm not usually stumped. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. I stumped you with you that You don't one. believe in God at all? Mm-mm. Not even after having your Mm-mm. baby? No. I actually, Did you, were, you, were you raised with 
any kind of religion? Yeah, I'm raised. like floored right now. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> I was raised a little, I bit, was a little prepared. bit Christian, but it wasn't like forced Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom brought me to church probably because they had free daycare. <laughs> Go, mom. And there was some single hey, guys at church <laughs> she was picking up on the single guys um yeah i, I Ooh, that's uh, where i need to go yeah. no, <laughs> i just um i just don't like you know um, i don't like organized religion and here's something that i i've kind of little theory that i've had in my head that um if you do take the idea of god of what people see god as that it's it's really us like who you oh, yeah. the voice in your head that you that forgives you that loves you no matter what mm-hmm. that believes in you all those things that you ask you know santa claus in the sky I, that's 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 your god you're your own god well i i so, do believe we are a part of god and god i believe in god yeah. do you believe like in the universe like I think we're just. What happens to you when you when, when you're gonna die? We just go on the ground like every other. Animal no, that's that, so sad. Yeah, we're just here on this planet for just a little blink. That's you why. I, yeah, that's why I just want to have as much fun. And if you ever change your mind, are you gonna come back and tell me? What's that? We'll have to have another. If I become religious. Yeah, because well, it yeah. happens. Yeah. Fuck. You, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I do that, I'll tattoo your name on my chest. Oh my that? god, and we got that. <laughs> record it forever and ever. <laughs> a big old fat M. Yeah. Uh, hey man, that would look mm-hmm. good. That would look good. <laughs> um, I want to go over this really quick, just in case anybody is listening. Depression diagnosis is made when at least five of the following symptoms occur, which is depressed mood, loss of pleasure in all or most activities significant weight change or change in appetite tell me if you experience these things um, change in sleep change in activity fatigue or loss of energy diminished uh, concentration and feelings of guilt or worklessness and suicidal so yeah oh yeah that definitely you've done that. yeah one thing that's kind of been my little triangle for life is i you know the just mind body spirit mm-hmm. and so that's where fitness has been such a vital thing for me because i feel like when i work out it just gives me those those free drugs those free endorphins mm-hmm. that make me feel so good then you add in like mother nature i love being outside and appreciating you know earth and um, when you take care of your mind your body and your spirit that's just going to always uplift you and you're not going to be depressed but sometimes it just okay. happens and, i'm gonna ask the spirit's yeah. not related to god well, no, 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 no. When I say spirit, I mean like my spirit as as me, as Dirk, my personal spirit. Okay. So, um, drugs. Did you do? Did you take antidepressants and things like no, that? No, no. Counseling. I, yeah, You're just not that kind of guy. Well, when I was a kid, You're uh, like, I was not in those a, kind no? of drugs. <laughs> no, yeah, I was like, mm, what you got, bro? <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, when I was growing up, I was in a lot of therapy. Uh, my mom had me in all kinds of different, you know, uh, different therapists and counselors and all those people. And so but, now we're going to, we're going to, I want to ask you about mm-hmm. that because when you and I are talking a long time, well, probably about a year and a half ago, I want to say yeah. a long time ago, you posted something else and it was about molestation, mm-hmm. you being molested as a kid. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. I was molested in second grade. So I was probably seven years old. And, um, I had a kind of like a volunteer mentor. Yeah. We can't talk about that. That's organization. Right. That's what I said. That's what I was. <laughs> but it is, I yeah. want people to know that if there's a, 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 a child for children organization that this happened, mm-hmm. not, be, not because of them, but you got to be careful still. Yeah, no, it was, it was not the, the main <clears throat> one, but it was, it was where charity. I lived in Littleton. I'm from the Littleton, Colorado, Denver. And um, so at the time, not having a dad, my dad died when I was three. And so my mom signed me up for this organization to give me like a male mentor. And um, so they signed me up with this guy and he was really cool. But then, you know, he kind of started, you know, doing some inappropriate things. And then he moved and I went to visit him. My mom actually sent me to visit him in California, which I thought, you know, if you look back on shit now being a parent, was like, she wanting like a break or? I don't know. To be honest with you, it's just one of those weird deals. Why would you stick your kid on an airplane? To and, go see a grown man. Yeah. So that's when, when I visited him, he molested me there um, at his apartment. And So uh, I'm going to ask that. What, what took place? 
Well, he put Just on only, I want to ask, I want to say this because there's other people that are listening yeah. that are, have experienced and they can, it'll mm -hmm. resonate. And yeah, he, he had put on some porno. Um, so I was watching that and that, I was probably, let's see, second grade, I think I was seven. Were you like, what the fuck is this? I was have happy to see porno. Before? No, <laughs> wait a minute, at seven, I well, guess? Yeah, I, mean, I, was were you a, just like, I was a little boy and you right. know, I like girls and stuff like that. And so I was, you know, we had gone to I see I don't know a, what a seven-year-old boy yeah. is thinking. Oh, I was definitely always right, like there. really you were, you were into girls. Advanced, oh, huh? yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, I had, he had shown me like some. I don't know, some sex toys or some shit in his uh, drawer. And then I had taken a shower and then he dried me off and then gave me oral pleasures when he dried me off. And so that's the extent of my memory of what happened. Um, but then he shortly thereafter ended up adopting like his ex-girlfriend's son. And so then the energy towards me shifted then onto that guy, that boy. So can you, um, can we talk about, do you remember what your feelings were like after, um, that after having been scene? molested? Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I mean, you, you, I was so young, so I didn't really have understanding of what had transpired. Did you know it was wrong? Yeah, but you know, you're trusting an adult. That's the sad part is when, when adults take advantage of kids, it really fucks you up because it destroys any trust that you have in anybody in when, life huh? yes yeah, so, so when you have somebody who you think you know loves you cares about you and is going to protect you and then that person you know does something to you then it just shatters it forever uh and now so you have guilt feelings shameful don't know really what went on don't really want to talk about it you decide to say something well and this I, guy I, by the way i don't think he's he was ever caught right no he's, he's actually yeah thing. it's actually an interesting it's kind of sad story but um mm. i did tell my mom at, prior to that trip you know he was you know touching my she butt still and stuff let you go and she still she didn't do anything about it and that's the part that i guess irked me the most but i was also a kid so i don't you know i couldn't i couldn't do anything more you know what i'm saying that's the bad part. Did is you that, say no? I don't want to go. No, I. Yeah, no, I did. It hadn't hadn't gone that far yet. Um, but the part that gets me is that it didn't stop with me. So then he molested that, uh, you know, the adopted boy, and then he ended up dating a, a girl with several kids, and he molested one of the boys. I, I just found out a couple, uh, like a month ago, and so that's the part that I guess kind of really irks me is that. You know, I did say something and nothing happened. And then more multiple people's lives now have been, you know, ruined from. But from you that. did, you did. And yeah. mom just chose not to. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, now then I have animosity towards my mom, who's also supposed to be my protector and those things, kind of like what I was saying. And so that's where, like, you know, my wiring's kind of fucked up because, you know, you have some traumas in your life. Did, so did you ever, now your mom has Alzheimer's, right? Yeah, she has Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, do you feel, have, have you started, did you before that diagnosis, before she started experiencing the symptoms, did you talk to her about this kind of stuff? Yeah, actually we were driving to San Diego together, just two of us. and Because uh, now she's older and now this is, when this it comes was, out. This was actually 10 plus years ago. So I, she, her memory was fine for this conversation. And so I told her, I said, hey, do you remember this? Do you remember what you know what happened and everything? And she like acted like she never even remembered it. Oh, God. And so that's the hard part. She just kind of either didn't want to deal with it or swept it under the rug or just it in her brain just didn't register. But I, I honestly, when my dad died, she died. Mm -hmm. So that was she was never the same after that. And so I've had to forgive her as a human, you know, you no know, thinking about what she went through, like losing her husband at a very young age with a new, you know, with a young child and especially now being a father and seeing what that would look like. It, it's really, so I've, I've just had to forgive her for her own shit. I mean, she's, she's fucked up too. Right. And everybody, so, everybody's doing the best that they can from where they're at yeah. um, with what they've got. When there were some things that I wanted my mother to apologize for that I swear to God, I thought she was going to apologize for. I mean, I only, you know, lived my, mm -hmm. Most of my life, um, just trying to heal from stuff. But she was diagnosed with brain cancer mm. and given three months to live. And I thought for sure that's 
this is going to come, you know, you know, you're going to yeah, die. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it never came. Wow. I never got that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because when she passed because of the mental fuck, I love my mom. Yeah. She did do the best yeah, that same she could. Here. I wouldn't be who I am yeah, today. I feel the exact same way with my mom. <laughs> right. It's She's like my a best love friend. Thing. Yeah. Yep. Such an odd relationship. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, but I feel I've got this hashtag, uh, nothing holding me back, because me personally, I feel like I wouldn't be able to do, I mean, you see the, the art and the things that I do and mm -hmm. my personality yeah. coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be able to be that with her alive. And when she yeah. died, there was something about that that I felt free because mm. her, she wasn't around anymore to make me feel guilty okay. about being who, because she didn't feel like she could yeah. be whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think it's generations um, because I sat there when I would go visit her and, you know, I'm waiting for that apology. Yeah. Just like you having that conversation yeah. in the car and you're like, yeah. okay, now I'm going to get that car. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that. Cause we've, you know, mm -hmm. and it just never comes in and they just um, play dumb or yep. something. Yep. It was and you're I, like, fuck. you know, I just, I, I expected to at least have a conversation about it. Um, but at the same time, though, I don't know that I put that much energy into her response. So what she, whatever her response was, was going to be that. And, uh, you know, I was going to deal with that from there. So, I mean, obviously I didn't get the response that I wanted, but it is what it is. Right. As was my mom being my mom and that's how she handles things. She's different. Um, we've got, uh, Something about you, though, that's different than everything that you've gone through. So you've gone through molestation. I think you had even uh, physical abuse. Yeah, my, my mom's dad, my grandpa. Okay, and then your suicidal attempt, mm -hmm. depression. Yeah. And I was in a crazy hospital <laughs> for 10 days. We had that on my resume. Nice. <laughs> We're keeping it real. Keep it fucking real. <laughs> but with all that being said... Yeah there's something that you've done and you have stopped the fucking cycle of abuse. Well, yeah, that's, I think you and I in the pre-interview, we talked about that. That was one thing that, I mean, I definitely for myself, uh, all the, a lot of times people who act out as abusers were abused themselves. And that's one thing that every abuse that I've been through stopped with me. So. And so now you're, your father. Yeah. It's weird. Oh, it's so weird because I'm a father to myself. My son looks and acts just like me. Oh so God, this last so year cute. when he was three was a very oh, I guess, right. profound year yeah. for me to be an older dad because I'm in, the, in my 40s, just like my dad was when you he died. damn good. Thank you. My 50 shades of gray. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was, thank you. It was such a, um, such an interesting year to see myself in him. And to think about what I lost at that age. Because when I lost my dad, you, you don't really realize. But then mm -hmm. when you all of a sudden are a parent to you again. And so I guess that's kind of what, you know, my, I'm just fulfilling the childhood that I didn't have through my son. And filling the holes in my heart through him. So It's going to be interesting when he's seven. Yeah. And you look at him and you're going to look, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> How the fuck can somebody do that to a seven-year-old? Yeah, I, I mean, I already, I already think about that right now. I mean, when I look at his Good. innocence and yeah. to think about anybody who, who can ab abuse a child. That's like, my, but, that's my, I, I can't, yeah, I can't handle children I know. being hurt. Yeah. Um, um, what do you feel about social media and, and the grass always being greener? I mean, how do you feel when you're looking? Because I know sometimes I can get on Instagram and I can start feeling really insecure. You get caught up in seeing everybody's perfect oh fake God. lives. Are you um, fucking kidding me? I guess I would, I would take social media with a grain of salt. I have a lot of fun on there. Obviously, it's brought me some amazing connections, just like our friendship, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I just use it for fun. Um, I don't take it seriously like a lot of people do. And I definitely just try to use it as a positive forum uh, to share my life, my story, and my fun. I don't get you into politics. Yeah, I don't get into, you know, any controversial things. I just try to be happy and fun and at the same time, try to be real. I mean, because guess what? You know, not every, not every day is a rainbow. 
you know. <laughs> right, I, I know. Mean, I it, can totally picture you dancing too right now in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love those posts. Thank you. <laughs> um, and honestly, like one thing that I've, I've just had a lot of fun with, with just, I don't ever think before I post it. I literally just do it because if you think too much, then it, then it becomes, you know, like mm -hmm. you're trying too hard. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to do that. I just, I just kind of do something and it just happens and then it makes me happy and then hopefully it makes other people happy. Do so. you have any regrets in life? Oh gosh. Everybody that's says there's question. no regrets and I, no I don't regrets. think that's, no regrets. I don't think, I mean, I think we can learn from everything and turn negative into positive, but I got a couple of things in life that I kind of regret. Oh, I mean, mine's kind of a cheesy answer to be honest with you. It's Good just, uh, I was too eager to grow up at a young age. So I like, bought a house and started my business when I was like 22 years old. And, um, I wish that I would have pretty impressive. Well, yeah, it is, but I would have rather gone to Europe and fucked around for a couple of years. Right. You know, I would say that would be a regret now that I'm married with children. Um, it would be nice to have just kind of just taken off. So, um, are you still, t I don't know if you're still doing it. Uh, last time I checked you were a Sappo. Yeah. What? So. Let's talk <laughs> Can people find you there? Oh, it's a secret group. So I started. Uh, uh, <laughs> Not so secret anymore. Yeah. You're fitting the blow right. up. <laughs> um, about almost almost three years ago, I. Uh, yeah, you want to hear the whole story? Yeah, I do. Because yeah. right, it's actually kind of interesting. So uh, because of my abuse. Everybody, anybody hears it first here. Um, on one, of the things, <laughs> one of the things that kind of. I'm a sex addict. So that's something that's been a product of. <laughs> maybe my upbringing and, and everything Absolutely. that's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've always battled that, that vice, mm -hmm. you know, my demons with that. And uh, so I, you know, been to therapy for that. I've done this, I've done that. And so I was like, you know what? I've never been to um, sex addicts anonymous. I should just go fucking check it out, mm -hmm. you know? And so sure enough, I did. And it was terrible. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just watching everybody check in with themselves around their sex addiction and there was so much shame around their pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that if you could kind of take that pleasure and, and harness it in a healthy manner, you know, where it's not affecting your life or your job or your relationship or whatever that looks like. And I just felt everybody was so judged by society that was in there. They felt the need to quit something that now sex addiction is different than drug, alcohol. Like there are obviously addictions that you do need to fucking stop and get fixed. Sex is a tough one because, well, it's sex. You know, we all do it. We all came from it. It's like food. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, how do you stop that? And um, so I, when it was time for me to check in, I said, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to keep being me. So, uh, so I went home. Yeah. So I went home and I uh, had known a little bit about Facebook groups prior to creating my own. I had been in a couple, so I had, you know, a little bit of knowledge about it. And so I created sex addicts and perverts only. I think I was like one of the 10. Were first you 10 really? Yeah. You <laughs> so I just, yeah, there you go. Top 10. <laughs> and so I just uh, created the group and posted on Facebook. Hey, I'm starting this group. And I added maybe like a hundred random people who I thought might've been cool in the group. <laughs> <laughs> the cool people. And, and really the, the foundation of what the, the group is. Uh, I just wanted it to be a non-judgmental group where people could be their sexual selves and just be free and be able to be wave their freak flag. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the logo. And it's been probably one of the most special things that I've ever been a part of. There have been so many relationships that have come from that true love. Yeah. There has been baby, a baby babies. that's been born. Um, obviously there's been lots of drama. Mm -hmm. Obviously there have been lots of sex and <laughs> orgasm. So if you've had an orgasm because of me, you'll need a beer fucker. <laughs> <laughs> beer too um but yeah it's been it's been truly one of the most special things to be a part of even from the outside i don't even participate hardly anymore i mean i'll check in and mm -hmm. post a selfie every once in a while but the group has taken its own its own I've self seen yeah, its own heartbeat. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so but it's a it's a private group on Facebook, so it's a safe. Facebook shut me down twice. That's another deal. Love it. So this is yeah. we're not saying that sex addiction is not a serious addiction. We're not we're not making light of it. I'm not at least because I battle my own demons. But mm -hmm. I think um, the impression that I got from it is that it's a 
it's a safe place for people to go and just not feel judged. Yeah, and that's society part judges of the process too much. And we, mm-hmm. we learn things when yeah. we get to be ourselves. I've learned so, you know, as silly as it was me creating it, I've learned so much from everybody in the group. It's been, we have everybody. We have all types. I've learned that. And what happens there stays there. Yeah, we try our best. You know, of course, not everybody always understands and respects the, you know, that. But um, because that means if you're a part of it, you're not supposed to tell other people that you're what you're posting or your face and stuff like that. First first rule of Sapo Club is suck if you do that. (laughs) Do not talk about (laughs) Sapo. Second rule of Sapo Club is there's a special um, knock. (laughs) Yeah, right. Seriously, right. But uh, yeah, so it's been it's been a beautiful thing, and I've I mean we uh, think have like. 2000 members i think now so we got up to like 3500 the first time and then facebook squash man you know what's neat is there's all kinds of going (laughs) what you could do with this yeah oh yeah i'm going into business mode we've got people in europe we've got members all over the world and so that's the beautiful part is you know just through social media that they could connect in some way, shape, or form. Maybe when you throw one of your other parties, Love mm-hmm. and Lies can come there and do. I like would love a little, that. I would love that. A little episode. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to ask this before we get to our three questions mm-hmm. that I ask for like every interview. Yeah. I want to know how you lost your virginity. I was twelve, thirteen, like right around that summer. My birthday's fourth of July, so uh-huh. I don't remember exact date, but uh-huh. I was right around that age, and I was, um, I don't know, fairly tall for my age, so I didn't look, you know, like a little kid. And I was living in an uh, apartment with my mom, and there was a single mom who lived a couple of times <laughs> down. And uh, she was, was she? I think, maybe like 18, 19. And she was a little rocker chick, you know, okay. like with the tight jeans. So she had a kid the, already at 18? Yeah, you know, she had a, yeah, she had a, I don't know, maybe like a one year old or something like mm-hmm. that. And she had the, you know, Aquanet hair and the Metallica mm-hmm. shirt with all the rips. What color was her hair? Oh God! Was I mean, she, she probably has no. She was blonde. She was like, um, like I don't know, like blondes. dirty blonde. Your wife oh, is beautiful, by the you. way. God, yeah, thank you. Beautiful. I know I did good. Yeah, you really um, did. But yeah, so this is an interesting deal. So I was basically just at her apartment while she was out doing whatever. Who knows? You know, mm-hmm. probably drugs and, and drinking and stuff. And so her kid was just sleeping. So I wasn't really babysitting, but I was just there to, you know, in case something happened. And I was watching the Snorks, if anybody remembers that, like underwater Smurf no, show. I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, I vividly remember it. <laughs> of course you do. And um, so she came home, and I'm sure she was intoxicated. And she went into her um, went into her bedroom, and she changed, like right sort of in front of me. And I could see her changing in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And she saw me seeing her, and I was 12 or 13, so I was literally a walking boner. <laughs> you know, pretty much 24, <laughs> seven, 365. And, um, she saw that and she came out and she goes, do you like what you saw? And I was like, well, yeah. Oh, wow. And then she brought me in there and that was that. So I don't know. I don't know. Did you do a good job? No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely okay, there's not. My other regret. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, she, uh, she wasn't the best teacher, uh, but that's okay. I, you know, it was one of those deals where I, as a guy, I guess maybe it's different. I just was, I was ready for it. it. was no big deal. I didn't put that much weight into it. And it just was an organic thing that just naturally happened. Wow. So, so um, I've got the three questions that I yeah. ask everybody at the end of the, at the end of the uh, interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is the love in your story? In your the life? love in my story is that I'm here and I love myself. That's the biggest fucking thing is to be able to go through a lot of shit and to be able to come out of it and look yourself in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and still, you know, love yourself. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. So, and to too many people don't love themselves they don't. and they feel shame saying that mm-hmm. like they're not supposed to love themselves. I don't think they I don't, know how. I right. Think you gotta... Yeah. Well, that's another society thing mm-hmm. is they make you feel bad for, they say you're arrogant. Well, guess what? You know, I'd rather fucking be happy and, and arrogant and love myself than not. And confidence is sure. different than loving yourself. Well, There's yeah, like truly, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's the love part. God, I love that. Thank you. Me too. Uh-huh. And what is the lie? <laughs> well, we, I told oh, you this. Yeah? I'm a guy. So, you know, you know, I'm fucking. Jerk, you can, I had to ask you that. Yeah. Go ahead. No, say what you're saying. Say, <laughs> you, you know, you can tell when a man's lying when his lips are moving. That's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So this um, person, this guy, he's a police officer, actually a Phoenix police officer. Uh, I was talking to you the other day. I said, I'm just going to have to ask Dirk this. He said that every man has a dick pic in their phone. What do you think about that? No. No? I nope. don't. 
<laughs> you disagree? Yep. There's there's a few people that just aren't the way that we all are. Surprisingly you, enough. You have one in your phone. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's my screensaver. What are you talking about? He's going to post that on Sappho. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's your screensaver. I can't because Facebook, <laughs> Facebook will delete me again. Shit. I'm in Facebook jail all the fucking time. Can you believe oh, that's, that's a thing? Awesome. Facebook jail? Really? Yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I got, I, got, uh, <laughs> I, got, I got put in jail for something. Something I was posting on Kid Rock or something. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. Right, yeah. Stupid. But, um, I don't, I really, I, there's people that I've met who, who I know just don't. We've talked. I've talked to them about it. And they're just not that person. Thank God, though. We yeah. can't. Everybody can't be walking around, right? You know. Um, and what is the truth in life? Your the life, truth in life. life. The truth. The truth, I guess, is just uh, being my authentic self. Good, good, bad, ugly, whatever that you know. Especially with my marriage, you know, just telling my truth. Um, when my son's old enough to be able to be true to him. I think that's something that a lot of people that we uh, don't, we're not real. And we put on a, a show for society mm-hmm. to fit in mm-hmm. and I don't want to fucking fit in. So that might be why people, like you asked me the first question about why do people like me? Cause I'm not trying to fucking fit in and I'm different and they can feel that. You and, are. And they're, they're attracted to that because they, they like to they? watch me. Yeah, definitely. So anything else you want to say? Oh, I don't know. I think that's it. I think, I think, I think we just went over my whole life. I tell How do you, you feel? I'll tell you what. And I know it's I know it sounds it sounds bad having gone through stuff and I know other people have gone through worse and, and more. Um, but you can overcome anything. We'll say that. If you just if you just want to be here on this planet and you want to do what you want to do, just overcome it. Just it's just bad shit that it makes you stronger. So that's kind of how I, that's how I've healed is every single thing that I've been through. I don't regret any of it. I wouldn't change any of it. It's brought me to where I'm at to where I'm sitting here talking to you about it. And it's made me appreciate the fuck out of life because, you know, I'm just here for a little short time and I just want to make the most of it. So that is, that is an amazing way to close this episode because, um, you know, that's the truth. I think. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how can people find you? Because now I know everybody's going to want to see find that selfie. Me? Uh, yeah, well, where can they find you on social media? Well, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram account was hacked uh, this last year. Oh, shit. And so I had to like redo it, and I've been kind of, haven't been feeding my Instagram that well, much. Well, we can send people to your Facebook. And yeah, then my name is Dirk Nelson. I'm also, I've got two Facebook accounts, and so just find me there. All right. Just find me posting some silly stuff. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Much love. Thank you. Thank you.